Hey friends, what's up? How's it going? Ash here with Jensen, so that you guys are doing well. It's time for that 2022 edition of Keep Only 10 Summer Fragrances for Life. I did not look at my 2021 version or any other versions that I've done of Keep Only 10 Fragrances for Life so as to not skew what I was picking for this video. So I guess if you wanted to, you could compare this one to that one and see what's changed. But essentially all this is is a, a snapshot in time. So that's the idea. These fragrances here are the only 10 that I would keep if I could keep only 10 for summertime. We got Niche in here and designer both. So let's go ahead and roll the little intro and check out these 10 fragrances that I'd keep for life. And these are in no particular order. I don't have these ranked from 10 to one or anything like that. So we're just gonna go on through them together. And also I'm gonna throw some codes to you before we jump into this. We'll keep it short and sweet. Jomashop.com, use the code GENTS8, save yourself $8 off any order over $110. Great discounter with tons of fragrances on there. And then twistedlily.com, use the code GENTS10, save yourself 10% off the entire website, big time niche website. And those are linked in the description along with all these fragrances I'm gonna talk about here today. A very obvious one that I just have to get out of the way. It's Aqua de Joe Profundo from Giorgio Armani. I'm an Aqua de Joe fanboy. I will uh, always own up to that. I would make excuses for Aqua de Joe if I had to. If Aqua de Joe called me in the middle of the night and said, dude, I did something really bad. You need to cover for me. I would be Aqua de Joe's alibi. You'd have somebody like, no nah, man, Aqua de Joe screwed up with this one. They completely foobarred it. It's trash. And I would go, Mm, did they really? So this has that Aqua de Joe DNA front and center, but modernized here, giving it a nice little green twinge. It has the minerality that I really enjoy in here, along with the aquatic freshness and cleanliness, citrus and sweetness that everybody loves. Aqua de Joe Profundo, I would keep that. And I gotta think that that was on last year's list. That's why I'm just putting it right out there at the beginning. Then a Creed, Millicene Imperial. This is one of my favorite Creed fragrances. Not my absolute favorite. That would be Green Irish Tweed. And then probably Aventus and Royal Oud. So this isn't a top three favorite Creed, but it is one that I really love for summertime. Mainly because I think it's so darn classy. In the opening, it's got this great salted watermelon note that I absolutely love. And then that Creed ambergris sort of musky freshness as the fragrance dries down. It's not going to appeal as much to younger guys out there, I'd say because it's maybe not quite as sweet and is a little bit more mature. But it smells fantastic. I love the stuff. So Millicene Imperial gonna make the list above all the other warm weather creeds out there like Silver Mountain Water, Virgin Island Water, Royal Water. They got a lot of waters. Back to the realm of designers with Missoni Wave. Missoni Wave, an easy choice because it doesn't cost all that much. Presentation looks great. Has a magnetic cap that I love to mess with. Smells similar to Versace Pour Homme or Chanel Allure Homme Sport. Both of those fragrances, super easy to wear. Very enjoyable scents for summertime. Really good performance, clean and fresh. Missoni Wave is the type of scent that you don't have to think about at all. You can just grab it, spray it, and go and know that it's gonna work. Then we're gonna go with Tom Ford's Mandarino Di Amalfi. Now I thought about putting in Tom Ford's Costa Azura, which has long been one of my favorites from the uh, warm weather centered Tom Ford fragrances, but I think I'm changing my vote a little bit here. Gonna go with Mandarino, which I believe is the one that most people would probably pick out of the group. Citrusy, a little bit green, aquatic, fresh, clean. Mandarino Diamalfi smells absolutely stunning. The performance here is not the greatest on earth, but I don't really care, even though the fragrance itself is pretty expensive. So a lot of times I would tell you guys, oh, you know, the performance isn't great, but it's cheap, so you can spray it a whole lot. Here I'm telling you that the performance isn't great and it's expensive and I still don't care. So I guess I'm saying, depending on the fragrance, I don't care if it's not a beast mode scent. Mandarino di Amalfi, keeping it. I also thought about going with Mandarino di Amalfi Aqua, but that one is just not quite as interesting to me. A little bit more toned down, a little bit more herbaceous. Mandarino di Amalfi smells a little bit nicer to me. Back to designers, the new Terre d'Hermes Eau Givre. It's opening my third eye. 
Hermes made me sad with age 24 because I just didn't like it. Didn't like the way it smelled at all. The opening was not too bad. I mean, it was a little bit of a green overload that some people I know wouldn't like at all. And some people have told me they hate it actually when I've had the fragrance on back when it first came out. But as it dries down, it just feels thin and tinny and metallic and just uh, not all that pleasant. So age 24 let me down. Then this came out. I was a little bit hesitant. You know, I was thinking, mm, is this going to be a, a redo just kind of a, another crapped up Hermes release that I, I really despise but no Terre d'Hermes Ogivre smells awesome even though I really can't pronounce that worth a crap Ogivre so yeah this new one the opening is great the citrus here smells more natural and at the same time it's done with a, a very modern touch and it doesn't go too overboard with the citrus in a way that a future fragrance in this list uh, some of you hate so we'll talk about that when we get to it, but the way that the citrus is done here doesn't go too overboard with that rindiness, with that tartness. It gives you just enough to make it interesting, just enough to make it kind of prickle the tip of your nose in a very nice way, but it smells great is what I'm trying to say. That citrus, really lively, zingy, poppy, love it. And as the fragrance dries down, it still maintains this great wearability and versatility and mass appeal. So it's classy, but very fresh at the same time, which is not always easy to do. Do. A lot of times fresh fragrances come across boring and smelling like a gym fragrance, just some stuff that no thought was put into. The type of fragrance that you throw into a bag and it doesn't matter if you forget about it because it doesn't matter that the fragrance even exists to begin with, it just exists to make you smell generically fresh. That's how a lot of fresh scents come across. But this one has enough, uh, enough flavor to it to make it interesting. Back to niche. Uh, which one? Which one? This one. Mansara Cidrat Boise. Now I know what you may be thinking, Ashton, I have seen your videos in the past and you've said intense Cidrat Boise is better than this one. And you like that one more. And I would tell you, yeah, you're right. You're right. I do like overall the new intense Cidrat Boise more and you can wear that one during the summer for sure. But if we're talking just summertime scents, I'll probably take this one over that one. Both this one and the intense are pretty sweet and their performance is up there. Pretty strong fragrances. So I wouldn't go completely insane with the atomizer on these. Really high heat situations, you blast yourself with Cedrat Boise a good cool 15 times. That's too many. So yeah, this is a little fruity sweet gets compared to Creed's Aventus. It's not super close, but it's in the same ballpark, the same family, same style, kind of. Really people pleasing stuff, versatility there through the roof. You can wear it all year round realistically, but I'll take that for summertime. Gives me a nice little extra arrow in my quiver. Let's get this one out of the way. Light blue forever, Dolce & Gabbana. You remember what I was talking about with the Terre d'Hermes, about that citrus in the opening? So the citrus in the opening of this one is very much love it or hate it. It's grapefruit, quite a lot of grapefruit, and it comes across as a very natural grapefruit for better or worse. Some people will say for better, like me. Other people, like some of you out there watching right now, will say for worse. Because it's tart, it's rindy, it's a bit sour, it's bitter, but it's sweet and fresh at the same time. I know it's a lot of different things going on there, but if you cut into a grapefruit and you give it a little spritz, you just grab that grapefruit and give it a little squeeze, uh, you'll know what I'm talking about. So that's gonna be the main thing you pick up in the opening, grapefruit. There's other things there, but grapefruit's definitely the focal point, and it's really gonna be, whether you like that or not, as to whether you like this fragrance or not, because it makes a, a definite impression. Not the type of scent you spray on and you go, well, I don't know, we'll let it dry down. Let's see how it goes. When you spray this one on in the opening, you know right away, yeah, that's for me, or uh, uh, uh. Oh, for me, it's a big win. Love it, think it smells fantastic. Wife loves it as well. When it dries down, it does change, obviously. The grapefruit fades away slowly and you get some vetiver that comes in there, but it's not really a type of vetiver that's gonna make a huge impression. So again, it's going back to that opening. Does it work for you, yes or no? Check the box. If no, don't worry, it doesn't work for a lot of people, but it does work for me. Then we've got one from Zerzhov. It is Neo. Neo, Neo. So we just talked about citrus. This also has citrus and the citrus in here smells exquisite, opulent, magnifique. Very different than the citrus in Light Blue Forever though. This is a combination of citrus notes 
and it doesn't have that bitterness that you will find in Light Blue Forever, which some people actually will say in Light Blue Forever to them smells like body odor. I don't get that at all. If I did, I wouldn't wear it, but some people out there do. Enough people say it that it's definitely a thing for some people out there. Don't have that issue here with Neo at all. It's also green, very clean, just the right amount of sweetness, and it has quality that is through the roof compared to 99% of citrus forward fragrances out there, along with some great white florals in here as well. Neo is one of those fragrances that I smelled a sample of years back, bought it immediately, ran through most of the bottle. I need to get another one. There's not too much of this left. That's one of the things with these old Zerzhov bottles. You look at it like this, and it doesn't look like there's a ton in there, but you're like, oh, okay, well, there's enough. It'll last a little while. Turn it on its side to see how much is actually in there, and you go, oh, yeah, not not much. Got only two fragrances left. The next one is from Guerlain. It's Guerlain Homme Loboise. This one uses lime, which you don't see used very often. So once again, citrus in the opening, you're gonna find citrus across so many different summertime fragrances for obvious reasons. So you got lime in here, you got some booziness, gives it a bit of a, a mojito vibe, which I say every time, but that's how it smells. Nice woodiness in here as the fragrance dries down. And a lot of times you can find this from discounters for very cheap. So the quality here is great, especially when you compare it to the price point that you can pick this up for. That goes for a lot of Guerlain fragrances. Uh, Guerlain Homme, Eau de Parfum, that's also very good. L'Instant de Guerlain, very good. They've got a lot of them out there, frankly, that you should check out. Last but not least, Ormond Jane Montebacco Verano. Fell in love with this one as soon as I smelled it. It is a great blue fragrance for summer, like a higher end blue fragrance, but it does have a lot of aroma chemicals in here, especially in the mid and base as it dries down. Cashmere and Isoe Super really prominent in here. So it's gonna give you this fuzzy modern woodiness, but it does have versatility that is through the roof and huge appeal. Opening very, very pleasant here and it does its own thing. I mean, you can tie it back into the original Montebacco, but you can't really compare this, at least I can't, to any of the other blue fragrances that I have. So it's like a very unique high-end blue scent. Does everything that you would want a blue fragrance to do and is fantastic during the day in the summer. And I've said this a few times, but I guess it bears repeating. Montebacco Verano was a limited edition. It sold out, so it was technically discontinued for a little while. And then because it was so popular, they brought it back, so. All right, guys, that is it. Keep only 10 fragrances for summer 2022. If you ask me tomorrow to pick out 10 fragrances that I would keep for summer, uh, most of these should be on there, but it's possible, like I said at the beginning, that some of them will be switched out. This is kind of a snapshot in time. Let me know in the comments some of the fragrances you would keep. You don't have to list out all 10. Your go-to heavy hitter summer scents, the ones you always look forward to, the ones you want to wear, the ones you get good attention wearing, uh, whatever. Let me know what those are. Thank you for hanging with me, guys. Stay safe out there. I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later. Thank you.